Welcome to Clone My Business. In this lesson, we're going to talk about setting up your business offline. So with your business plan and everything else established or you will have established by the time you get through this course, it's time to make your business legit. And this includes creating a real legal entity, setting up your business bank account, and most of all, taking payment. This should all be done quickly so you can hurry and get to the fun part, which is making sales. But warning, it's super easy to get hung up on all of this. The most important part of this entire lesson is getting your uh, payment gateway, probably Stripe, getting that set up. But generally speaking, you need to have a business checking account and at least the beginning stages of a business entity created with whatever that looks like in your particular country. In the United States, I think it's best to start a DBA. But don't let that stop you. Some people have even started with a personal account then upgraded later after they got a sale or two. A sale is proof that you have a business. I'm going to circle back to this, but a sale is proof that you have a business. So while all of what I'm about to share is necessary, I don't want you to get hung up on it. Again, remember speed, speed, speed. We're trying to go as fast as we can. So your job is to do the bare minimum to be able to accept payment and then you can always do everything else down the line. If this doesn't make sense, please let me know. Let me know. Send me a question uh, or excuse me, put it in the question or comment area or send me an email. It's important. So I want to make sure that it's clear. Okay. So how to create a business entity. So what kind of business entity? Well, let me tell you, at this point, you might be wondering what kind of business entity to set up. Maybe you've heard of LLCs, that they're really great, or maybe your brother-in-law told you about an S-Corp, but here's the blunt truth. Until you make a sale, none of that matters. It doesn't matter. You can spend weeks and weeks and weeks researching the perfect corporate entity, but it doesn't matter unless you've made a sale. I'm going to make this information available because this is a business and you need to treat it seriously, but until you've made a sale, you don't have a business. So when starting out, what this is what I recommend, and this is quickly. Register a DBA with your local county or the equivalent of, of that in your country. Make a sale, then make another sale, then make another sale, then get started with an official business entity, okay? But let me give you, this is a big fat disclaimer, okay? This, of course, is not official business legal advice. You should always do your homework when it comes to your local state and country laws. When in doubt, speak with a legal professional. This is one reason why I like a DBA, which is a doing business as. It's a good first step until you make some more sales and you really know that you've got something. I mean, you could get all excited. I do my best to be all rah-rah and cheer you on and be your best cheerleader to get you going on this business. And you might get out, out there and do all this stuff and you don't make a sale. So that's why I say a DBA because it's like 20 bucks or something like that. And then it lets you accept payment in the name of your business. But anyways, at that point, once you see that you've got a real viable business on your hands, then you can incorporate, okay? This is a simple step to be able to take payment without the business name being the same as your own name, yet not as involved as setting up everything legally. Mostly is to avoid what most people do, get a business idea, spend money on setting up a new corporation, and then never make a sale. But again, my disclaimer, this is not official business legal advice. Always do your own homework. Always talk to a legal or business professional when setting up your business, okay? So I could stop here and say, this is all you need to do. But like I said, once you have sales coming in, you'll want to make sure that you're abiding by all of your state and country business laws. So keep in mind that you are setting up a fully functioning business. This isn't a hobby. This is a real business that you need to, and you need to take the right steps to make sure that you're doing business in accordance with your state or province. And I strongly encourage you to do due diligence in making sure that you're doing everything correctly, like paying your taxes and the whole thing like that. Okay. When the time comes, when the time comes, one of the best tools out there that I know of, especially for people here in the United States, is LegalZoom.com. I don't have any special affiliation with them. It's just that I've used them and they're very handy, very easy to work with, and it's just, it's very straightforward. 
They provide every kind of business service you can think of, including incorporating your business. They can help you set up a DBA, S Corp, or LLC, or whatever you choose. And if you're not sure of what kind of entity to set up, they have customer service reps who can walk you through the process so that you get the right kind of business structure that's right for your particular situation. So the process takes a little while, but you can have it all done in as little as seven days. And they'll have all of your articles in corporation and all of the other necessary legal documents that you need to get moving. Again, this is not professional business or legal advice. That's my disclaimer, but this is a great place to get started, okay? Um, let's move on to business checking account. I am not going to recommend any one particular bank. <laughs> I don't even like banks, but you do need to have a business bank account. This is different from your own personal checking or savings account because it's primarily used for your business, so you want to keep them separate. When it comes to tax season, you'll be glad you did. What bank you choose to use is up to you, but be sure to look for deals and other sign-up perks. The banks all want your money, <laughs> so the smart ones offer various incentives. Some people will tell you to sign up with a bigger bank because it carries more weight, but this doesn't really matter. It's often the smaller, uh, more local banks that will give you better rates and perks. So just be sure to do your homework on this or even ask around. People, you know, a lot of times they'll say, oh, I've got a great bank and it's something that you've never even heard of, but it turns out to be like the best bank that you've ever done with and the customer service is really great and the perks, blah, blah, blah. So do your homework on this. It really boils down to you choosing the one that you feel most comfortable with. You might also consider getting a credit card too, at least once you get going, uh, especially one that offers points because if you choose to run ads, more on that coming up, and it's something that I suggest you do, you can really watch those points start to rack up. Okay, so how to take payment. Technically, this is online, not offline, but you're connecting your offline stuff like your business checking account with this. So with your bank information handy, you can set up your online payment processing. This is how you're going to take payment from your clients. Your bank may offer an online payment solution, and actually QuickBooks does too, and FreshBooks do as well. Uh, it depends on which one you use. But to get started, PayPal works well. Uh, I started with PayPal back in 2010, and some people are very, very anti-PayPal. I'm not personally anti-PayPal because I haven't had any negative I haven't had any challenge with, challenges with them in over a decade worth of, of my own business. I've used them for 12 years now, and it's never been a problem. So I think they, they are a fantastic option to get started. Well, I shouldn't say fantastic. They are an option that you can use to get started, okay? Uh, Stripe is another option that you can use, and it has a bit more versatile, versatility. Versatility? Versatility, Yeah. Um, in fact, a lot of the anti-PayPal people are pro-Stripe people. So if you're going to build your business using high level, which is something I strongly recommend and I'll talk about even more, um, then you can connect your Stripe account directly there and it makes it super easy to collect payment, even recurring payments from clients. As in, you can literally text a prospect from your high level account and it will charge them via your Stripe account. It, it's amazing. I love it. But either way, both Stripe and PayPal have similar rates. Getting started is easy. Just go with whichever one you want to use. Follow the steps. It's just real easy, like setting up an account on anything. You'll be set up in no time. With this, then you'll have everything that you need to take payments online and even directly from your website. And like I said, even directly from your phone. You can text somebody an invoice and they will they will be able to pay for it with their business credit card. So, Sean, do you take checks? Do you accept checks? You are going to encounter some clients who will still want to pay via check. And usually it's the very small and the very big client. So obviously taking checks means having time to, you know, you have to take the time to go to the bank or deposit them online or whatever, however you do it. Um, I mean, most banks now offer scanning services where you can do it just from all from your phone, but you still need to have like a P.O. box set up or, or a UPS store or whatever to have a business address so that they can mail the checks to you. You, want, you don't want them sending them to your personal address. But don't be discouraged if someone wants to give you a check. Just make sure that you have a great billing system set up so that you can track everything on your end and then automatically send out an invoice at, every month. 
So with that said, actually, setting up your accounting. So again, technically this is online, but it's all related. So this is, I mean, to keep things simple, you can use QuickBooks or FreshBooks. Um, there's a few others out there, but these are the big daddies in, in this space. They both have software that you can download or you can just use their monthly service online. And either one works great, simple to use, and it, it's as simple as you need it and as complex as you need it. So you'll spend some time setting it up originally, but once it's up, like it just becomes part of your monthly ritual and nothing more. And then eventually your bookkeeper is gonna take care of all of this for you anyways. But this is how you track everything and and keep everything uh, legit, right? Okay, so last thing on this. A long time ago, let me tell you just a quick story. Um, <laughs> I wanted to start a little business out of my home. I did everything I thought I was supposed to do. I worked with a designer to create business cards and it took us like a month of all this back and forth because I was trying to create the perfect business card. It was like a month and I spent like $165 or something or maybe it's more. And I got my first order of a thousand business cards and I was really proud. Like I felt like I was like Mr. Business, Mr. Entrepreneur. Um, then I proceeded to buy pens with my business name on them. And then I even bought a printer and copier that had a fax machine. <laughs> this is in 2006. Okay. So they were still kind of a thing, but whatever. It was 300 bucks that I didn't have. And my wife um, got mad that, that, I bought that. Anyways, long story short, I didn't make a dime and the, with that business and I wasted a ton of time and money in the process. And as we've already covered, there's very little you actually have to buy to start this business. So think about it. You have a digital marketing agency. It makes sense then that most of your digital marketing is also digital. One of my goals then is to help you get into money making quickly and not money spending. If that makes sense. Money making, not money spending. With that said, there is one and only one offline or physical tool that will serve you well, I think, at least at the beginning, and that's your business card. And to get business cards, you do not do what I did and working with this designer and going back and forth and back and forth. All you have to do is go to a place like Vistaprint. It is super simple. It's a great place to get your first business cards. They have ridiculously cheap prices on, I mean, high quality cards. You can get as fancy cards as you want. All you want to do is get the bare minimum um, and then be sure to get a coupon code because they always have coupon codes. So you can probably get like, 500 business cards for like $10 or something like that. So I will tell you, don't spend any more than $20 tops for your first round of business cards. Some Spend some time looking at the other business cards that you, know, you have lying around your house or your office. And then if you use a service like vistaprint.com, they actually have countless professionally designed templates that you can use. Just all you have to do is pop in your logo and put your business information, change the colors to match your own business colors, and then um, you can proof your business card immediately, and then select how many you want, and you're good to go. And this is really all you need to get started. Don't spend a lot of time or a lot of money on super fancy cards. I've seen this so many times. Everyone, they start a business, and a business card is the first thing that they do, and they're like, yeah, look at it, I've got a business card. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur now. <laughs> It just doesn't matter. So just get a bare minimum of business cards because you're probably going to end up changing them as you get settled into your business anyways. So again, if you're going to use Vistaprint, be sure to check for coupon codes and save some money when you're checking out. A word of warning though, companies like Vistaprint are going to tempt you with upsells. They'll show you other, once you load up your, upload your logo, they're going to show you what that looks like on pens and stationery and car magnets and coffee mugs and all of that good stuff right with your pretty logo front and center. Just resist the temptation. You don't need any of that stuff. You just don't. You're going to get all your business from word of mouth and, and online. You don't need to hand out coffee mugs. and it, You just don't. It's the only physical product that you kind of need is your business card. Okay, and I'm just saying kind of need because it is nice to have if you're doing some face-to-face -face networking um, and then you're talking to business owners in real life once you get started. So... 
it's exciting to have your own business and, you know, drinking out of your own custom custom company coffee mug. It's super fun. But at this point right now, you're trying to grow your own business, not trying to grow Vistaprint's business. Okay. They're doing all right. They're good. You're not. You need to make some money. So stick to the business cards and then just check out everything else right now, at least is a waste of money. And in fact, you're probably never going to use that material ever again anyways. So I know I went kind of fast on this one, but these are some of the things that you need to do both offline and kind of online as well. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. As always, I want to make sure that I help you get this right, right out of the gate, and I will see you in the next lesson.